Okay, here's another example. A rock is thrown upward at 15 meters per second. And we're told to find two things, how long it is in the air and how high it goes. So we start by doing this. We start by drawing a little diagram and then figuring out which way we want to be positive. So I'm going to draw the ground and I'll draw an arrow indicate, indicating the upward throw and this rock goes up and comes back down. Now it doesn't really move to the right but we're going to I just draw it a little bit with a left piece and a right piece just so you can see the whole trajectory through the air. It really goes straight up and comes straight back down. But this picture helps me think of it going up and coming back down. I'm going to call the beginning point A, the point right at the peak B, and down here at the bottom where it hits I'll call point C. And for this problem I'm going to let up be the positive direction. So I draw a little arrow and put a plus sign next to it pointing upward indicating that up is the positive direction. So even if it's just a simple sketch you can draw a sketch even if it's a very elementary drawing. Now let's take note of the given information. We're told it's thrown upward at 15 meters per second. So we know the initial velocity is 15 meters per second and it's thrown upward which is positive. So the initial velocity is positive 15 meters per second. And I'll write that down. The acceleration I know is 9.8 meters per second squared. Gravity though is pulling down. The acceleration is down. So the acceleration in this problem is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And getting that right will make the difference in getting the answer right or wrong. You need to get the direction correct. That's why it's helpful to draw a diagram and draw a little arrow showing which way you've decided to be positive. And remember you can make either direction positive. You could call up positive or down positive. Just pick one and stick with it through the entire problem. Everything you need to do after making that decision needs to be consistent with that decision. So writing these down, writing my initial velocity as a positive number and the acceleration as a negative number in this case is consistent with up being positive. Now there are a few different ways we could solve this. I'm going to show you one way right now. Think about point A. I know the velocity at point A is 15 meters per second upward. That's the speed with which it's thrown. Now note we're not concerned with the throwing of the object. We're concerned with the moment right after it's released to the moment right before it hits. It hits the ground and stops but its final speed would be the impact speed and its initial speed would be the speed at which it is thrown. So someone takes their arm and accelerates this thing upward and then releases it. We're not concerned with the arm accelerating the rock upward. We're just concerned with the free flight through the air from right after it's released to right before it's right before it hits. And for that motion the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. That's the velocity at point A. Right at the peak up here at point B it is stopped for just an instant. Its velocity is zero. And then right down there at point C it falls and that's the final speed. The speed with which it hits the ground. So I'm going to take this equation V equals V0 plus AT and I'm going to consider the motion from A to B and I'll write that down. Cons consider the motion from A to B from point A up to the peak and I do that I think about point B up here because I know something about point B. I know the velocity right at that point just for an instant is zero. So for this first half of the flight, its initial velocity is the velocity at A and the final velocity is the velocity at B. So I could write the equation like this. VB is equal to VA plus AT. This, remember, is the initial velocity and this is the final velocity for just that first half of the flight from A to B. And when I write it this way, I know the velocity at A that's my 15 meters per second. I know the velocity at B is zero. I know the acceleration so I can find the time. And that will be the time for the first half of the flight from A to B. And I could put numbers in here and solve for T. Um, before I put numbers in, I like to do the algebra first. And you solve this algebraically for T and you get T is equal to VB minus VA over A. 
And then once I ha I'm trying to find the time, that's my question for part A, how long is it in the air? Once I do the algebra to solve for T, then I put the numbers in. So it looks like this. VB, okay, VB, the velocity at B is zero, minus the velocity at A. The velocity at A is the initial velocity, 15 meters per second. So we have a negative number in our numerator. Then the acceleration, remember the acceleration is negative. So it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I have a negative number in the denominator as well. And when I divide negative 15 by negative 9.8, I get a positive 1.53. And you can see the meters cancel out and one of those seconds cancels out, and I'm left with seconds, positive 1.53 seconds. That's the time from A to B. So the total time in the air, which is the answer to the question, is going to be twice that, and you can do that in your head. It's 3.06 seconds. That's the answer to part A of this problem. Now, once I know the time, I can list that up here with my given information. And I'm going to be real specific. I'm going to say the time from A to B is 1.53 seconds. And I'll say the time from A to C is 3.06 seconds. So now in my list of given information, I have that. Now I'm going to erase all the other stuff, although you can just continue working on, on your sheet. I'm going to erase this to leave some more space on screen. And now in part B, I'm asked, how high does it go? So to find the height that the rock reached, I can just use this equation. Y is Y0 plus V0T plus 1 half AT squared. And to find the height, that's going to be the height at point B, or its Y value at point B. That means for the time in this equation, I need to use the time from A to B, that 1.53 seconds. My initial velocity right here will be the speed at point A, the 15 meters per second. So I'll solve the problem using those numbers. Y, and this will be the height at the peak at point B, will equal the initial height, and that's just a zero. I'm not even going to write that. I'll just put in zero. Plus V0T, that's 15 meters per second, times my time of 1.53 seconds, plus 1 half times A, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times my time of 1.53 seconds squared. And that seconds right there gets squared, and so it cancels out with those, leaving me with meters, and this seconds here cancels out with those, leaving me with meters. So this will be in meters plus my second thing in meters, I end up with an answer in meters, which is what I would expect for the height. So let's do the math. 15 times 1.3 is 22.95, and that's meters. And then I have uh, 1 half times negative 9.8 times 1.53 squared. That's negative 11.47 meters. And those combine to give me 11.48 meters for my answer. That's the answer to part B, how high it goes.